This is super exciting. We haven't been here for two weeks, right? We missed two weeks in a row. Yes? Do these, does this thing work? Yes? Yeah, go. Yeah, what? Well, you, right. know, you know we missed two weeks. Go. I know we missed two weeks. So one of these guys tell me I'm losing my tan. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Tan is in full effect. Tan How's is in my full tan? Effect. It's not bad. I burned my scalp for the first time. I've never done that before. I have less coverage up here than ever. What? And Welcome I, to the club, pal. I know, dude. I'm in. I'm. I'm one of these guys now that has to go buy a hat from the gift shop, like a, a, a Four Seasons dad hat that's oh, waterproof. You, you can't. You can't go in the sun naked. I can't. I guess I can't now. So yeah. add add it to the list of things I can't do anymore. Uh, David Walsh is here. Daniel Faust. Bits of interest. Joey B. Cliff Peebles. We missed you, my man. Uh, who else? Nicole is in the stream. Uh, John Tagnacci, James Sykes. Everybody's here. Everybody's here. Matt Dodge, I see you. Good question. We'll try to get to it. Listen, we have a sponsor that we want to shout out first, and then there's a lot to get to. So, yeah, so we no further preamble. Who is this? This is FTX. It's built mm. by traders for traders. Josh, did you hear Sam Bankman Freed with Matt Levine, Joe, and Tracy? It's in my queue. I haven't gotten to it yet, but I heard it's great. Went a little viral. Went yeah. a little viral. What Matt Matt Levine? Uh, Matt Levine basically can't believe anything that he hears anymore. He he almost can't believe that he has to live in this timeline. I I feel like is no? he credulous or incredulous? He's incredulous at this point. Okay. He's so always anyway, been so incredulous, Matt but he's just like, wait, why are you saying what you just said? Like that's like his whole persona at this point. So Matt Levine love. trades at FTX alongside mm. with Steph Curry, Larry David. All right, mm. let's get into it. Not a bad, let's not get a into bad it. list. I, right, Josh, I, tra gonna... I traded Robin Hood. Uh, Jay no, Luther, no, thank no, you. Uh, we see you too. We see no, you too. Uh, right. I, I'm, I'm the captain now. All right, let's start, out with, uh, let's start out with this bloody red heat map. So today was fun. Gross. This heat map looks like my ass. This is the worst. Um, Honestly, this is so this bad. Heat map looks like, this heat map looks like you're the top of your head after, really after some time in the sun. Let's really throw does. up this chart from, uh, this, is, this is a little bit stale. It looks even worse now. This is from Michael McDonough. This is the S&P 500 year-to-day performance. It's on the cusp, actually, I think we might be there, of being the worst in at least three decades to where we are at this point in time. What is it? April 26th. So this, yeah, this chart's stale and it's, it's worse. Yeah, it's worse. Hold on. Can you put that back up and explain that one more time? The white so this, line is where we are now. That's where we are now. This from maps year to date. every this maps every year to every annual performance going back to 1993 it looks like. And, and so what this did you say? this was this is from like a, a week or, or a week ago. So now this is probably officially the worst start through April 26th that we've had in 3 decades. Not great. Mm. And you know what this doesn't do? It doesn't lead to a lot of people wanting to be out there, like doing a lot of trading. It's not as much fun as it was in 2021, and we're starting well, to hear that from is, all, the, all the firms about transactions. The good news is bonds are also getting crushed, so uh, that's fun. Until this week, yes, pretty bad start for bonds too. So um, why don't we start here? We we got we got a barrage, a barrage of earnings after the close. But before we get that. Before we get to that, speaking of like trading slowing down, so Robinhood apparently was overstaffed by a, by nine percent or so. That's how much they're letting go of full time employees. Yeah, I don't think Robinhood even would have come would, would have been able to come public if not for the pandemic. They had really perfect timing. They do have six billion dollars in capital. I think they're probably doing the right thing and staffing down as though it's going to be a while before they get back to the trading levels of twenty 2020 twenty and and twenty twenty one. Um, I do have a partial list of some of the positions they've eliminated. And what do you mean? From what I hear internally at Robinhood, it's uh -oh. a little bit of a bloodbath. So I just wanna I wanna go through some of these. Time out, uh, time out. What do what, 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 you you got you got sources? What are you hearing? Yes. Uh among the nine percent of staff that Robinhood is laying off, the vice president of memes, the head of viral trade execution. The Wait, director are you joking? of fun and dances. No. Okay. Okay. You're Junior YOLO associate got cut. <laughs> uh, Vlad's personal hydration coach, AKA payment for water flow. Um, <laughs> the electric scooter valet got fired. The senior Ponzi manager gone. The assistant <laughs> NFT gimp. They're, they're just indiscriminately 
letting people go. It's really, I mean, it's really, it's going to be tough. I don't know that there are other firms that have positions open, for example, for something like director of fun and dances. It might be really tough for that person to go to Janice. So we're, so, we're going to have to put a pin in that one and see what happens. Uh, but so, my condolences. So the stock's down 86% from its highs. Yeah, it couldn't has happen, been, by the way, to a more uh, responsible group of financial professionals, to be honest. Has it? Has so. it? It's not even been public for a year. Unreal. All right, let's 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 get to earnings. So Google, what is it down now? Google Hold reported- on. I can't, I can't believe the brokerage firm that lets you in three seconds – uh, take out a margin loan, trade options, no experience necessary. I can't believe that they are seeing a downtick in uh, customer activity in an environment like this. It's so weird. Okay, what, where do we want to go next? YouTube? Uh, Google? Here's where I want to go, my friend. I want to start with Google. So off the lows, down 5% after hours. This was one of the last stocks hang, hanging high, one of the last big ones. It lost support a couple of days ago. Not looking great. All right, so here's the deal. I'm in this. YouTube I'm ad on this. YouTube ad revenue, $6.9 billion versus $7.5 expected. Not nice. Not nice. Uh, I, think, I, think, I think some of that is TikTok. Let's throw up this chart of TikTok. Barron's had t- some TikTok over the weekend. They did a story on Facebook. I mean, look at this monster. I think that TikTok is definitely making a dent in everything, YouTube included. Everything. And I, everything. And I also think um, the same issue that Netflix has had uh, keeping, keeping people paying YouTube has that same thing. It's not paying users. It's the issue. It's just you can't keep people's attention when they don't have to wear masks anymore and they have a lot more options than they had a year ago. So we're lapping, we're lapping like Q1 2021. It's, it's, it's hard to do for any company that requires a lot of people sitting on their ass with nothing much to do. And that's but, all of these companies. But they're still growing like weed, like a weed. So revenue was mm-hmm. up sixty eight revenue sixty eight billion dollars a little bit lighter than expected up twenty three percent year over year. Mm-hmm. Better than Microsoft. Better than Microsoft's uh, revenue growth actually. I think that rev- Microsoft's nineteen. We're about to get to that and oh. a seventy billion dollar share repurchase to boot. So, so that's that's a big number. In twenty nineteen, they authorized a twenty five billion dollar share repur- repurchase. Last year, they doubled it to fifty, and now they're at seventy. And Alphabet actually was the second biggest buyer of their own stock last year after Apple. So like out of all the public companies, nobody has done more already in terms of share buybacks. And it sounds like they're just getting warmed up. Worth pointing out, Ruth Porat, who's the CFO, comes from a traditional finance background. They got her from Morgan Stanley. So she's not a a Silicon Valley uh, CFO. She's a Wall Street CFO. And I think if you don't have, look, if you're not going to go try to outbid Elon Musk for Twitter (laughs) and do things like that, then really you should be returning capital to shareholders. And this is the most efficient way, uh, especially with a a stock price that's 20% off its high. So I think this is smart. At the open. At the open. 25 25. now. Yeah. Smart move. Smart move. What's Um, his TikTok chart? Did we put this up already? We we, we just did this. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about Microsoft. So Alex Morris has a sub, I think it's a sub stack, the science of hitting great stuff there. He's got some charts that I want to throw up. Mike, uh, actually, before we get to this chart, Duncan uh, or John, throw up the other Microsoft chart. I can't find it, but oh, here we go. Microsoft revenue by major product line. All right. Office still growing. Xbox. Eh, I'm sorry. Uh, still Office growing. Is growing because they raised prices. Don't tell anybody. Um, actually. Their subscriber, their subscriber growth is still growing like mad. I which I don't know how. How are people still buying Microsoft Office? Doesn't everybody who need it needs it has it? I guess not. Anyway, this chart. Throw this chart back up. Uh, commercial cloud revenue. No, I'm sorry. The next one, the bar chart. Here we go. Commercial cloud revenue, ninety four billion dollar run rate, up thirty two percent year over year. Ninety four billion dollars is a lot of money. For context, their entire revenue five years ago was ninety two billion dollars. I was going to say, how many publicly traded companies are doing ninety-four billion dollar annual run rate? Right I was now? just, I, I, I'm on it. I'm on it. 20? I'm on it. Not, I mean, not it can't many. Be a lot, dude. It can't be. It can't be a lot. Do you know how much money that is a year? It's a hundred billion. Um, how has this business not gotten more saturated and crowded? And uh, how have prices not been under pressure at all for cloud revenue? Like, why aren't these companies ripping each other's throats out? Is they're just that much opportunity that it's nothing but green field ahead. 
I don't know. Like, I, I'm eyeballing it. I'm eyeballing it. So, so the small. It looks like there's like ah, 50, 40, 50 companies that do 100 billion dollars a year. Dell did 100. Target did 100. Comcast did 116. Facebook did 118. Okay. These are 12, trailing 12 months. This so this, like if this Sick. were a public company, it could have a 500 billion dollar valuation oh, by yeah. itself uh, easily. Five well, not anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe four. Okay. Uh, All right. So else? let's let's get into it. Okay. La- uh, last thing. Hold on. Last thing before we get into the topic. Last thing I want to say. So Netflix growth is uh, reversing. We heard from Facebook last quarter that growth was reversing. Uh, Microsoft and, and Google are still growing. Microsoft did 19% a year. We're going to talk about Apple. All right, let's get into the first topic. Let's go. Okay. So things changed. This is you, actually. Yeah. We're, we're still in you. We're still in you. Uh, okay. All right. Here, so here, here it is. Topic one, things changed. I'm looking at some things. Josh, less than a year ago. I'm not looking at anything. I'm, Le- I'm, reading, I'm reading a book. Less than one year ago, Zoom had a larger market cap than Netflix has today. That's crazy. That's hilarious. That's, hila- that's hilarious. So Ben and I were talking about this on the podcast today. It's all one story. We know what it is. It's interest rates. It's, it's, low, it's, it's low duration stocks, high cash flow stocks, outperforming the stocks that have the potential the, the promise of earnings 20 years in the future. Nobody's time for that shit anymore. Nobody's did, subsidizing losses. Sorry, you did a post that I want to get into, eight charts that explain the market. Thought you did a really good job. And I've asked John to have these ready or Sean or I'm not sure. Do we we have the charts that explain the market? Yeah, we could we could just go through them and just zoom in. We're stop when you want to stop. Here we go. Okay, here no, we, we have them. All right. So All right, we got walk, walk, us, walk us through each one of these. It's worth spending the time because I really feel like you uh, encap. Your post encapsulated everything that people need to understand about the current environment. Okay. So, yeah, what this chart is showing is simply the price of Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Microsoft, Apple, and Google Versus divided by the S&P 500. Yeah, wow. And it's – people say, oh, uh, take out Facebook, Netflix. No, you can't take them out. What do you mean? Take this is the thing. Out. I'm not taking them out. Somebody did okay, that. So- I, po- I reposted this on Instagram and someone's like, yeah, but what does it look like without Netflix? And I'm like, do you even understand the word irony? Do you have any idea how, it- how hilarious that comment is? What, you don't get to take it out now? It's yeah, I want a cheese a pizza for hold- seven years. Yeah. Hold Stop the cheese, it. hold the sauce. No, you don't hold the cheese or the sauce. Neither of them get held. Put that chart back on. The me- the, uh, all right, the mes- so all wait, of the- is the message Is the message here, I'm sorry, is the message here- that like these stocks seemed invincible and we just spent every day talking about how is the rest of the market ever going to catch up it didn't invincible. have to ca- it didn't have to catch up these so stocks a lot of had take- to catch down a lot of takeaways here just just the obvious one is holy shit all of the outperformance going back to 2018 is gone Let, mm. let's keep let's keep it moving god damn all right um okay this this is the trade it's short duration long duration you so here we're talking bonds uh, obviously, short duration is outperforming. Let's keep it moving because we got a lot to get through. Okay, this is not. Any serious. comments here? Yeah. So, so the Dow, the Dow is breaking out relative to the Nasdaq, and the black line Hard. Is, Berk- is Berkshire, which is like the Dow Jones of co- of companies, versus Arc, which is like the Nasdaq of companies. If that's not a tortured uh, metaphor, and that I mean, boy, boy, oh boy, uh, Berkshire doesn't understand cloud computing. And Warren Buffett doesn't get technology every, every fucking time. It resolves the same way every single time. So I, I, I was thinking about this before is how difficult it is to think long term when we're just trapped in the short term. And how long did ARC outperform? It was a long time. It wasn't a long time in high. I mean, it was every day for a year and a half and by a lot. By a lot. Dude, there, there was this like moment in time where there were four people who just basically completely dominated the investing discussion day after day after day. And you like could Arc, not. If, who, who, Kathy and Chamath and. Chamath, Kathy, Dave Portnoy, and, uh, oh, right. and Elon. And of the four, I mean, look, like every day, the inve- like CNBC would be talking about what one of them just tweeted. And it was all on Twitter, the whole thing on Twitter. And it's just amazing. Like at that moment, you were just like, okay, this is the new market. This is just what it's going to be. It was the summer of 2020 all the way through the end of 21. Yeah. It really, really January. The inflation data started aggressively hitting the long duration assets and growth stocks, let's say in November and December. 
But it's really not until January that you'd be like, holy shit, oil stocks are up 15% year to date out of the gates. What else is up? Wait, consumer staples, utilities? That Materials. sounds like a Berkshire Hathaway market. And it legitimately, it it's been a Berkshire Hathaway today, market. Today I was looking at a chart of, uh, actually, let's just keep moving through it because we've got one of these in here okay. somewhere. Uh, this is nuts. So the 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 good the the Same reason thing. to look at these ratio charts, it's not that American Express and Goldman Sachs are going up. It's the opposite. It's, they're going down too. It's just that the fintech names are crashing. Mm. Mm. So oh, somebody pointed out uh, Berkshire Hathaway's uh, meeting is this weekend. Did, did you know that? Is that this weekend already? Yeah, we got emails. I got emails about it. Uh, I kind of feel compelled to watch at least most of it. But uh, every, every year could be the last one. I hate saying it, but I'll, I'll, as a shareholder, I'll be watching. By the way, I owned Berkshire the entire time. I never owned ARC. I'm thinking about uh, YOLOing into a little bit of ARC. What, what, is now the time if I were going to do it? Yeah, great time. All right, so a firm went from a $40, $50 billion market cap almost down to nine. Uh, so put the, far. Put the chart back up. Traditional finance versus fintech. So far, from nineteen billion down to five, how much? How many billions of dollars has it lost since the Super Bowl? Uh, so, what's the takeaway here? I mean, you, we were talking about this on the show on the on the on TCAF recently, weren't we? So far, we so so far, I was trying to recruit one of our employees. I can't. What I do you can't. Mean? I, I'm dead serious. I can't tell you who. Duncan, so you're not going anywhere. Forget about <laughs> it. Tell SoFi to kiss to kick rocks. Imagine taking that deal and taking SoFi stock. <laughs> let's keep. Let's keep. Let's let's keep it rolling. All right. Uh, uh, same thing. Old tech versus new tech. I okay. mean, my God. Next. Um, this is cool. What's in What's in the physical world? CF we got Industries, we, Caterpillar, we got the Cleveland big, Cliffs. Yeah, the big, yeah. All, all shit you buy and need on a daily. Well, not on a daily what's basis. The, but, what's the digital bullshit world? Roblox, Unity. Uh, Coinbase, uh, Coinbase, Facebook, yeah. NVIDIA. Yeah. Oof. yeah. I like, what was the guy Gartman used to be like? Oh, in this environment, oh, you want and, to invest and yet, in things that when you drop them, they hurt your foot. Gartman. By the way, PayPal. Yeah, Miss Gartman. PayPal. New lows. 73%. Uh, How? Where is Gartman? Did he pivot to crypto yet? I don't know. Isn't that what you're know. supposed to do uh, after are 10 we done years with, of... We, we, we done with charts? Um, oh, no, this, is, uh, this is good. Uh, uh, so, so this is showing two stocks, Invitation Homes and American Homes for Rent. These are built to rent. The, the, these companies build homes and they rent them. And again, consistent with the theme. I'm Buying long, stocks uh, is a- I'm, I'm long invitation homes and I've never been more bullish on the concept of single family Renting. home rental. Yeah. I've, I think let's go, it's let's, the future. Let's go back to Disney. This truly blew my face. I mean- Sick, dude. So, so Disney has underperformed the S&P over basically every time frame imaginable. Going back Sick. to inception of SPY, you go back one year, five year, 10 years. Okay, if you start in 2003, it outperformed. But- what are the takeaways here, Josh, for you when you see a chart like this? Um, this, if you if you see this chart and you don't immediately say, you know what, this might be the hardest thing on earth, like just this idea of like I'm going to pick a stock for 30 years. If you don't if you don't see this and say this is the hardest thing on earth, uh, this activity, this kind of activity, then there's no hope for you. You have to you have to respect. Like I learned a couple of summers ago. My first summer on a jet ski on the water, I learned respect the ocean. Respect, like you have to respect the ocean. If you don't respect the stock market, I know I still learned it. I saw you wipe out. Put that shit back up. Understand Disney in '93. You know what's going on, right? Iconic. This is like Little Mermaid, uh, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast era. This is their dude, Lion King. This is their biggest, baddest uh, moment where they just Toy Story. There's right. There is no, there is no other version of Disney other than Disney. There's no Netflix. Frozen, like, dude. That's much. Anyway, later. so so yeah. So so the takeaway is obvious. You need to Investing you need to respect the S and P five hundred. Respect. And oh man, I was just reading this thing. Hold on, I gotta share this. I was just reading this thing about back Toy to Story Arc. two. Back to Ark. You know, one of the things that she said in December, which I think w- was really like a crazy statement that she th- said over the next five years, we're going to compound at 40% a year or something, or la- or or on average, we're going to earn 40%, some crazy thing. Yeah. This yeah. guy at the Tycoonist, 
did a post where he actually looked at the probability of being able to pick stocks and deliver something like a 40% return. Just Zero. listen to this. The probability of even picking one stock that will compound at 40% over the last five years, ending this past December, only 33 current S&P 500 companies had returned 40% or better. So if you pick that random from the S&P 500, you had a That's one in, in bull market. In a Hold raging on. bull market. In a raging bull market, you had a 1 in 15 shot or a 6.6% chance of picking one of those 33 companies. And that's S&P 500. Now imagine you're trying to pick from a universe of uh, Russell 1000, which is what, what they're doing. So if you – now that's one stock. Now try picking multiple winners that could do that. If you try to do three stocks that would do 40% a year – you had less than a one in thirty-eight thousand chance. The Arc, the Arc flagship fund has forty-three positions in it, so you're gonna find forty. You're gonna find forty-three stocks that are gonna give you a combined forty percent plus compound rate. The yeah, the yeah. idea of trying to do that over five years is completely impossible. Like it could almost did, never happen. Anyway, did I just, you did you did you know that Arc is underperforming the queue since inception? That's still shocking to me because this thing had gone up so much. So again, respect and the market. And this is no disrespect for, to anybody trying to like build a portfolio that could crush the stock market. But seriously, like respect how hard it is to do that. It is we so, spoke so at the hard. top of the show about how things have changed. Shopify is such a bigger business today than it was in the beginning of 2020, right? It yeah. is a massively larger business today. And the success was reflected until things changed. Dude. Interest rates, inflation. Hold on, last thing. Shopify has underperformed the S&P 500 since the start of the pandemic. Did you know that? Which makes no sense other than how, much, how high it went. All of the gains are gone. Dude. All uh, of the gains are gone. Netflix has, twice, Net, Netflix has double the subscribers as it had in 2018, and it's now yeah. below – uh, the valuation to trade it at respect. In listen, if you 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 will eventually learn respect, and I think everybody's pretty much there at this point. Also, you will learn that linear, um, the linear mentality of this is a good company, therefore it's a good stock. Yes, that worked in 2020 because you were surrounded by other investors who don't know any better. That doesn't Actually, normally work. Does not normally shout, work. Shout to Howard Marks. First level thinking was uh, a second level thinking was a huge loser for a long time, right? First level thinking it's a good company by the stock. That's all you needed to do. Second, second level, level thinking. Go ahead. Second level thinking. Second level thinking is, oh, wait, everybody else already believes that that's a great company. Therefore, the stock is probably overpriced. I'm already on third level thinking, which is don't buy nothing. Stop buying things. <laughs> Everything you buy is down 7% the next day. Maybe stop. Maybe stop. Uh, all right. Uh, Apple is make or break. So Wait, we last thing, last thing, before we get to Apple, last thing I will say, we are undubitably going to look in back. Indubitably. I know, whatever. It was a joke. We're going to look back. I don't know when, but we are going to look through the wreckage and say, wait a minute. In 2020, whatever year it is, you could have bought Shopify at a $50 billion market cap. I don't know about that what one. Idiot, what idiot was selling? Do you know that we just fired Shopify and hired another company for uh, the Compound Shop merchandise shop? If you, if you go to idonshop.com to see, here it is. This is, a company called, this is a company called Spring that came to us because they became partners with Acast, which is who hosts our podcasts. And Spring? their quality of their, like we got a bunch of their shit delivered, the hats, the shirts. It's like a 10x over Shopify's vendors. Shopify has a business called Printify, and they have like these really horrendous German textile companies and Mexican hoodie manufacturers, and the shit just oh, is, they also, is they also not do, good. They, Shopify also does a lot of other things. Uh, they don't do merch well. We found a really, really good provider, and uh, I think they were called Teespring, and now they just they rebranded as Spring, and the shit is hot fire. All right. Uh, I want to go into Microsoft, Apple. I really think this is it. Like this is make or break for the market. What's the reaction to those Microsoft numbers? The stock's green. Uh, Fingers it crossed. Wasn't last time I yeah, that was up no. two and a quarter oh, nice. percent after oh, the close. Uh, if you actually look, if you actually look at a one-year uh, chart of Microsoft, 
275 is an extremely important level. It's where the uh, the bulls have historically come in and supported the stock. Broke below it today. Maybe that will prove to have been a false breakdown. Stock looks like she's trading 276 and change um, after the close. But this does look like it's a battleground area um, for for Microsoft. Apple is going to be even more important. So Everyone Microsoft Microsoft is a $2.1 trillion market cap. It's the second biggest. It's immense. It's very important mathematically for the market. It's very important for sentiment and psychology, but Apple's bigger. Apple's 2.6 or $2.7 trillion. Um, it's a huge chunk of S&P earnings and revenue and market cap, obviously. It's in the Dow. It's in the NASDAQ. It's in dividend funds. It's in shareholder return funds. It's in quality funds. It's, it's, it's everywhere. And uh, they report on Thursday night. And Apple, um, I wrote a post this week, Katie barred the door. Apple support, I'm, I'm saying it's like 150 uh, based on the, let's, John, throw this chart up. Yep. yep. Ignore, ignore the blue line. It's too noisy. It's the, it's the 50 day moving average. Let's take a look at the orange line. Um, really has been solid support. Look at the summer of 21. A year ago, look at last May and June. Yeah, yeah. Look how the buyers came in at that at that 200 day, and even that violation that took place four weeks ago when the market bottomed. That's the textbook definition of a false breakdown. We are now challenging that rising 200 day simple moving average once again, and it looks like 150 is a fairly critical area of support at least over the last eight to ten months. So. Uh, I think that this is going to be make or break on Thursday, and I think it's going to be much. It's going to be decisive, not just for Apple or even Fang, but for the overall stock market. I do not think the S and P five hundred will be down eleven percent from its peak if Apple gets slaughtered. I, I no just chance. mathematically, I don't see how it could happen. No chance. You know what's? I'm looking at some charts. Uh, Facebook was had almost twice as big a market cap as Berkshire in September. Yeah, it was over a trillion. Berkshire was like six hundred. That's now Berkshire's shit. N- now Ber- now Berkshire's seven forty, and Facebook's under five hundred. Got news for you: Berkshire probably technically can't withstand Apple breaking down either. So this, this stock is important to everything and everyone. What are these? Uh, what what are the Q? We got the Qs and the S and P. Yeah. So the Qs as of today, I, I think we're in a twenty one percent drawdown from the high. Is yeah. that right? We're back in yeah. an official bear market. Is it worse? Yeah. It's bad. No, it's about right. Yeah. It's about right. And the S&P 11. And... It feels so much worse than 11. My God. You know, and that's before Apple and Microsoft have really... Like, they just really started uh, to S&P's, succumb to this market in S&P's, the last week. S&P's, S&P's, S&P's 13. Got a little pukage into the close. A little pukage. All right. Not bad. The, the, oh, not the, bad overall. Is, the, you can't really hang your hat on this. I mean, you can if you're looking for, like, a short-term washout. Everyone is bearish. Mm. Mm. Everyone. Well, to our credit, you and I have been fairly bearish pretty much all year, or maybe. Did maybe... we believe that bounce? Did we believe the bounce? No. I don't think we did. No, it looked fake. Did you see that? The way they walked the Apple up from March 7th into uh, March 31st? I think it didn't have a down day in three weeks. That was, was very one of the most. We spoke with, we spoke with uh, uh, Nick Colas about that. That chart. Yeah. Again, a face blower, a true face blower. Stupidest, Went up like stupidest, 20 days in a row. Stupidest looking chart I've ever seen. It was completely mechanical. I still, to this day, don't understand how that stock You're, did right. that. So we've got liquidity coming out of the market from the Fed. Mm. We've got inflation still high. We've got five interest rates increases ahead of us. We've got, so. fine, whatever. We've got growth slowing, whole, and we're 30% off the highs. It could get it's, a lot worse. This Fed is not hiking rates nine times uh, into, a, into a NASDAQ crash. They don't have the balls. There's no reason to. By the way, you want to get rid of inflation? Just crash the stock market. No problem. No problem. Problem solved. Because I promise you, so much of the demand for everything from housing to uh, luxury rentals to vacations, whatever you want to throw in there, most of it is being fueled by two things. They're not, they're not doing that. People's homes have made them felt, feel rich, and the stock market has made them feel richer than they've ever been. And if you, What's more if likely, you, a, rate cut, a rate cut in 2022 or, or five more rate hikes? How do you do five more rate hikes 
with the stock market in free fall and not like wait a couple of weeks to see if that puts a dent in, uh, name it, consumer confidence, like whatever. Like, like let, if you're going to do demand destruction, which is what they're doing, well, give it a minute. They give, give it a minute. Stop listening to screaming headlines about CPI. Okay, we all understand that. Let's see if mortgage rates over 5% and a crashing stock market start to produce some of that demand destruction that you're looking for. Let's not do nine rate hikes. Like, let's, 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 let's tone it down a little bit. I actually, I bought, I bought stocks today because I was feeling a little bit scared because uh, I think that Michael in 2036 will not give two shits about Michael and about the stock market being scared in April 2022. I buy stocks every two weeks when my paycheck hits from Red Lobster. So I listen. Um, <laughs> well, same, I'm but I mean, I mean, practically bearish, deposit. but long term, super uber bullish. And same. the more stocks fall, the higher p- potential returns go. Uh, right. What are we doing with this reality bites thing? What l- is this? L- last thing, last thing. So we're gonna hear from Facebook uh, tomorrow or the day after. By the way, we've got Yuri and Timmer in the house on TCAF on Friday. I was gonna make that a surprise, but okay. All right. Okay. All right. So- we did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so. So Facebook, all right. So uh, their metaverse, whatever, lost ten billion dollars in twenty twenty one. Deep value. I, I don't think people are going to be too excited to hear that number. Uh, oh, it's going to look like order. a bargain. Wait till they build this whole thing out, and you and I can be in a on a virtual cruise ship together with um, virtual Bobby Flay uh, barbecuing for us off the bow of the ship. Just you wait. Let me ask you this. Some of the which would you rather buy today? I'm talking about for the next, I don't know, one, three, six. I want months, my whatever. hands in the metaverse to be chainsaws. Stop. Right. One, stop. Enough of your nonsense. One, three, six months. Like uh, uh, Facebook, Google, which are still monster businesses growing the top line at 20%, trading at pretty attractive valuations, or a Shopify that's down 75% that's still growing the top line very quickly. I mean, Meta, if Meta just does an Instagram spinoff, the stock could be up 40%. Like, they have cards to play. They just don't want to. And he has all the votes. You, like, you can't make this kid do what they just did with Twitter because he has super voting class uh, stock. Like, him and, him and Cheryl, basically, they could fend off anybody. It's like the New York Times. But if they, if they, did, if they were like, okay, we're under the gun, we seriously have to unlock shareholder value, I'm telling you, WhatsApp could be a monster uh, Instagram, Instagram IPO, ticker IG. thing could be so big, but they're not going to do it because nobody's forcing them to do it. So I, I don't know how bad the stock has to get before they take action. Speaking I, I really, of Twitter, I, really don't know. I, 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 I can't believe this. I can't believe it. Do you, do you want to apologize? Nope. Not apologize, but do you want to be like I was wrong and you were right? I was 100% or, wrong. Was I, I was right though? Wrong. I told you he's going to do it. Yep. Dude, I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna try. To, I think he's gonna try to take over like uh, Google next. Like people, people think this guy's gonna stop. He's prior like, to this, he's like forty-eight years old. This is the rest of our lives we're gonna be watching this. Prior to this, prior to yeah. this, what was the single biggest purchase by an individual in the history of the world? Honestly, probably like what's Howard even number Hughes two or what's William number two? Randolph Hearst? Maybe it's then. There's nothing like this. This is so no. The biggest much purchase. Money. The biggest purchase. What's the biggest of anything? Purchase of, of anything any? of all time. Prior to this, this is the biggest individual acquisition of all time. The biggest purchase by a single person of anything else in the history of the world by a lot. I, I mean, what? what you is that a piece to, of real estate? Or oh, no, sports team? Sports team. It could be. A, I guess it could be a sports franchise. That you would almost never see a single solo person. Now, asterisk. How much did how he's much did doing it with margin debt from fine, the public fine, company fine, stock? Fine, fine, fine. How much did, how much did Bomber pay for the Clippers? Four? No, come on. Three? It's not even. That's the, yeah, it's like three billion. It's not even on the. It's not even in the same. No, it has to be like honestly, it has to be like Louisiana Purchase or something. Like it, <laughs> like it has to be something like that. We would never individual th- purchase. By the way, why is Bill Gates short Tesla? What is that about? He has this. He has this putz running a family office for him. You know it's outperforming, underperforming the S and P for his entire life. They he does weird stuff. He's like his biggest position is a, a garbage dump uh, called Republic or what, like the, the garbage trucks. That's like his. That's like his blue chip holding. He, he's a, Tes- he should have given all the money to Berkshire and and just and and just uh, let it be. So Tesla cracked today. There was some data from Beastbook that we spoke about maybe six months ago saying that Tesla is actually the only thing keeping Ark afloat. 
Matthew, is- Matthew Bunton is saying. Matthew Bunton is saying uh, David Tepper paid two billion for the Panthers. Yeah, okay, times twenty. <laughs> it's, it's not even in the same. It's not even right. in the same ballpark. Let's it's, move on. That crazy son of a bitch did it though. He, he did really, it. He, he did like, it. he literally well, did it. Well, 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 well. Is he go, Is it going to go through? It would be funny if there's a, a margin call uh, in. Dude, Tesla. what if what what if Tesla stock was down thirty percent before the closing? He's not get this. It, this might not happen. It's not a done deal. Well, what do you? But honestly, though, don't you think Twitter stock will decline in lockstep? There's not another buyer, is my point. There's not another buyer. We did this. I'm also already. surprised that that somebody else didn't come in and say, "Wait a minute, wait a minute, we want Twitter." All right. Anyway, let's get. Let's I'm not on. surprised because they've had ten years to do it. So. Uh, All right, I, Nikki numbers. Nick Majuli wrote a post about inflation. Uh, CPI's up eight percent. If you didn't get an eight percent raise, you actually lost money. Not true. Well, it could be true. Wait. First of all, C- back up. People are saying that, and they're saying it's incorrect. If you didn't get well, an eight percent raise and inflation is up eight percent, then you lost money. And Nick Here's is saying that's not how it works. Well, it could be. Here's Nick's point. He said, "Let's assume that you are being paid a hundred thousand dollars a year after taxes, and you spend fifty thousand of it." If inflation hits 10% over the next year, your basket of goods will now cost $55,000 to purchase. So how much does your $100,000 salary have to go up to offset this? 10%? Nish, nish. 5%. 5% for you to break even. That's half the rate of inflation. Now, if you are not a saver, and a lot of people aren't, if you spend every dollar that comes in, yes, you need to match CPI. And CPI is a national number, right? Your, your inflation rate might be 13% if you're... Rent to New York City is up 30%. So anyway, but the point is, it's not as simple as what is the national CPI headline? That's what raise you need or you're losing money. I almost called Nick on this. What? He's right. Mm. What do you mean? What? He's only right on a spreadsheet, not in the real world. If you make $100,000 in in New York City, you're not only spending $50,000 of it. That's Get the hell not out of the here. point. That, you're, he's spending not, 100 and, you're spending 120000 of it. He's and geographic 20, And 20 agnostic. is coming from your parents he's, in Westchester. He's, he's not. I understand, not but people live places. City. But people live places. Actual people live in actual places. It, there That's are not, not a lot relevant. of places. That's not relevant to his point. If you're... If you're spending fifty thousand dollars out of a hundred thousand dollars, you need to get a five percent raise to keep up with inflation. That's what he's where, saying. Where are you earning a hundred thousand dollars and spending fifty thousand? Fine. If you're making four hundred and spending two hundred. In 200. the metaverse, is this a metaverse? What's the uh, difference? Personal All right, finance. Next post? topic. Next Fine. topic. That's the difference. Can Tesla sell car insurance? <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> Uh, Tesla recently began underwriting auto insurance for customers in Oregon, Colorado, and Virginia. The company plans to offer insurance to 80% of its U.S. customers by the end of this year. Let's assume he's fudging the timeline and it's next year still. Musk said that showing customers in real time how their driving affected their insurance, insurance costs could result in safer habits and lower premiums. Tesla can also use vehicle data to quickly pay out claims, organize same-day repairs, and provide better customer experience than conventional insurers. Moreover... Tesla can analyze crash data to identify how accidents were caused, then reduce the risk of them reoccurring by tweaking its car designs or software. Uh, I, this is one of those things where I believe the hype. I know insurance companies are racing to get their own apps onto people's phones. They've got to all the, the data. Do it. Do it. But I think Tesla will sell a lot of insurance. And I think if you are the type of person who buys a Tesla and they're, and they, and they're like, Add insurance for eighty dollars a month. You will yeah. click the box on the website. Like almost all of the people will. Am I? Do I have no. that wrong? Nope, I don't think so. Okay, so two questions: What's stopping all of the other next generation vehicles and vehicle uh, companies from selling insurance? And is this an existential threat to a huge industry um, of which companies like Geico uh, could potentially be? Mega disrupted, or am I overstating the possibility there? What do you well, think? Well, that's a long way away. I don't know that, but what I do know, Josh, is that the cues are way off the lows. Oh, that's way off good. the lows. Uh, Warren Buffett says an automaker is as likely to fail in the insurance business as an insurer is likely to fail in making cars. No way. It's not an easy no business way. at all. I would bet no against way. any company in the auto business being any kind of an unusual success. I know what he's saying. I know what he's saying. It's much harder for, in my opinion, 
like to go from insurance to building cars and the opposite. Yeah, I'm not saying underwriting is an easy business. Well, if you're an auto, if you're an auto company and you get into the business of selling insurance and you do it without a partner, you do it on your own. You're gonna need a lot of staff and a really hang big on. balance sheet. Hang and a on, hang on. Aren't auto accidents driving pretty freaking predictable? It's not like there's to be a white, a, a white, a, a black swan, white swan, a black swan that comes out of nowhere and wipes off every car. What do you? How? And as a result, the margins are very slim in that business. It's not that great Fair. of a business. That, that, well, because you're, exa right, whatever, cause you're, exa cause you're exactly right. The premiums are are not much because the companies in this business have a pretty good handle on how many accidents they're going to be each year, and, so and who to Rock insure and who not to. BlackRock put out a weekly commentary. We've been talking about this. I, we were joking about it. I don't think we, either of us really believe this. But they said, we could see long-term yields rising further as investors demand higher compensation for holding them in inflationary backdrop. Okay, that part makes sense. Uh, the next part, this is not necessarily bad news for equities as it could trigger a reallocation away from bonds into equities. No chance. When people are, Ben and I were talking about this today. When people are selling bonds, when people are selling stocks, they're going to cash. They're not going to bonds. Do you agree? To that point, here's Rick Reeder, managing director at BlackRock, a uh, friend of the Halftime Report. We have him on all the time. This is the largest asset manager in the world. This is the guy in charge of fixed income for the largest asset manager in the world. Quote, Rick Reeder is increasing cash holdings by more than cash holdings by more than 50% in many portfolios to a weighting that is, quote, much, much higher than it had been in years past. Uh, quote, for now, one of the most attractive things you could do is have patience. Agreed. And if you can get paid to have patience, that's a pretty good place to be. Prime money market funds holdings in the Americas rose from just under $146 billion in February to $193 billion in March, their highest levels of the year, according to the investment company industry uh, institute. Um, where does that 193 billion go given what's going on in April? 250? Would you be shocked? 250 billion in money market funds? Would I no. No. I th I think I th I think we're we're headed there. Um two two things also on the Nasdaq sell off. The top for the Nasdaq, not for most stocks, but for the Fangs, actually February 24th, which was the day Vlad uh uh Vlad, Vlad Putin uh, started his invasion. And you could say the two things are unrelated. I don't know if they are. I don't know if they are because that invasion drove up all the inflation uh, stuff. By the way, that which is- Which I think that is put, a, put a top in for, for growth Way stocks. out of the financial headlines these days, right? Yeah, nobody cares anymore. We're over it. We're on to the next thing. It's, shock it's shocking, but it shouldn't be shocking. This is how we roll. Uh, it's unfortunate because that- Conflict is very much raging, uh, night and day. All right, can I last just give a thing. PSA? Can I just wait? Hold on, a PSA, a PSA. You can't get too bearish. Like, come on. Could 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 you think that stocks are to go lower in the short term? Maybe even more than a little bit lower. You can't get too bearish. Who made I think money? We're, being I think we're going to test and fail. Uh, fine. The, the February lows. Okay, fine. Doesn't mean I think it's the end of the world. Yeah. I just think it's going to happen. I think it's inevitable. So. Okay. All right. Uh, crypto hacks. You you will be surprised to learn that last week's blockbuster crypto hack was the fifth largest on record. We are averaging one massive crypto heist or hack every week. Somebody stole $182 million last week and no big deal. Uh, the fifth largest hack ever. Two things. First of all, this one is a weird one. I'll get into it in a second. But $182 million is so much money. Like, <laughs> like in if real life. Yeah. If, if, do you remember growing up, like if somebody robbed a million dollars from a bank, it would be like nationwide news that like somebody got away with a million dollars from a like hunt. a man, manhunt is not even the word. It would be the fugitive. It would be Tommy yeah. Lee Jones and a team. It, I didn't it, kill my it wife. would be global. It would be fucking Carmen San Diego. Yeah, yeah. The, these people are stealing like $200 million at a clip on a weekly basis. And nobody even knows about this. Like, I, I might as well say $1.8 billion, and I don't even think people would flinch. So the world has changed. Um, this was a hack, not just a heist, which is more interesting. Uh, the hack wiped out all of the ether held by an algorithmic stablecoin project called Beanstalk, which 
I apologize to my wife for putting our life savings in that. I can't believe it didn't work. Um, the hack wiped out all of the Ether. Once the Ether was removed, the value of the stablecoin itself collapsed to $0.10 cents from a $1, uh, most recently trading at $0.06. Cents. Um, after the Bean stablecoins collapsed, the hacker's profit was $76 million. How, we, Why is there $76 million in an algorithm called Beanstalk Farms? What? What am I missing? Is this all people on Twitter doing this? Who who the hell is doing this? You know, you know, uh... <laughs> whose money is this? I'm dead serious. I'm not even asking rhetorically. Who's seventy six million dollars just got stolen? Is it a venture fund? Is it is it uh, is it Masayoshi Son? Whose money is it? Do you know? It's people that got rich in crypto. Who else's money could it? So they're like, oh shit! It's not pension. Uh, it's not pension fund money. It's like, oh shit! Uh, Twenty million stolen. <laughs> That's the way the ball bounces. Like, how you know, you know, it's gonna be a big business. We uh, we're talking to one cybersecurity for DeFi. Oh fuck yeah, it is. With good reason. It's a wild west. It's a wild west. All right, that's all I want to say on that. Uh, Fidelity four hundred one k adding Bitcoin to the menu. Did you see this big yet? Big deal. Yeah. It is a big deal, right? Yeah. Um, what idiot faced with the choice of how to own Bitcoin would opt for like some exchange they've never heard of that's based in a cave in Kazakhstan versus just owning a little bit in their Fidelity 401k? Like obviously you would own it with Fidelity. It's somebody you could not sue. Every, well, not, every, not everybody has that choice. Okay, a normal person that has a normal 401k choice. Yeah. Like somebody that's fortunate enough to work at a company that offers a 401k through Fidelity, and then they say Bitcoin is one of the funds on the menu. Isn't that doesn't that become the de facto smartest way to have crypto exposure? You it's can't a big touch deal it. because Fidelity's doing it. Uh, they're the biggest 401k provider in the world. They're not going to be the last. Friend Eric Golden tweeted today that this is a bigger deal than, than a Bitcoin spot ETF, and I tend to. I agree with you. I do. I agree with you because. This, to me, becomes the, quote, safe way to do crypto for, like, regular people. Like, average people that don't consider themselves to be crypto experts. It's like, oh, I could have a little Bitcoin in my 401k. I can't touch the money anyway. It's a great place to, to speculate uh, yeah. and, and do that. So I think it's a really big deal. I agree with you. And I think that's very smart of them um, to, to get there first. Uh, by the way, this is why the future will not be decentralized. Eventually, the biggest crypto balances are going to be held at Goldman Sachs and Fidelity and eventually uh, iShares, and you're just going to have to live with that's the future. The future is not, hey, let's spin up a DAO and blah, blah, blah. Like That's just not where most of the assets will be. The, the big firms are coming, and they're going to do a really great job. Okay, end of, uh, end of editorial. Where's Duncan? What's the story hey, with the hey What's the story with the new hat? Yeah, this is a Scranton hat, you know. Shout out to the office. Oh, yeah, I see. The Got it. Office. Got it. Yeah, One Duncan, tell tell Josh the analogy that you gave today. We were talking about how it's not fun trading anymore. What was the analogy that you oh, gave? Oh, yeah, I was just Speaking saying it Robin feels... Of Robin and layoffs? Yeah, I was just saying that uh, the stock market's so depressing now. It feels like if you're a baseball fan and, like, every game for a season gets rained out. It's just like every day <laughs> it's just like the market's just... Down more. Oh, cool. All my stocks are down more. <laughs> how, old, how, how, old, how old are you, sir? 34. This is the best thing that could ever happen to you. Do you understand that? Yeah. You're putting money in every, every two weeks, every month, adding to your balance. You, uh, two months ago, you were buying stocks that were down 25%. Now they're down 50%. You're buying the same stocks. This yeah. is all going to work in your favor. This yeah. is the best thing. You know who this is not great for? A 79-year-old who never diversified. Right. And who has Ark in tons of exposure in and yeah. bought Ark. Yeah. And and bought, you know, and, and did things because they saw them on TV. That's who this is not good for. For you, this is this is <laughs> rain in rain in the desert, my friend. <laughs> Why would you want to be taking boomers out of their stocks at record highs? How does that benefit you? It does not. It's it true. does not. All right, first it's first true. topic. Okay, so uh, first up, this uh, this question came in a year ago, but I thought it would be interesting to hear you guys' uh, thoughts um, now. They asked, can the government prevent a recession by sending checks at the first sign of economic weakness? Apparently not. <laughs> We're about to learn this year. I don't know. What do you think, Mike? Um, yeah, I think they could. They did, right? They basically yeah. did. 
I, yeah, obviously it. there are obviously there are consequences and ramifications, um, and sort of knock on effects that we're learning about right now. But I think in the short term they can. I think that we probably went overboard and did stimulus for way too long. Um, so this is a combination of, I think this is as much fiscal, uh, whatever, we don't need to get into it. Yes. That, I think that was going to be my follow up though. So, uh, I mean, a lot of people said that the checks were going to lead to inflation. I mean, is that really what happened here? You think, I mean, what's there, there was a lot of extra spending. Matter of fact, we spoke about this on the show today that consumers are spending 4.4% above trend. Actually, we didn't speak about that. Full stack economics just wrote about that yesterday, that consumer spending is still above trend. Why? Obviously, a lot of that was stimulus. So it was a combination of that, a combination of, of low interest rates, a combination of putting the economy on life support, reopening it, and oh wait, we can't just turn everything back on, supply chain disruptions. So it was a perfect storm that it's hard to parse out, oh, it was 40% fiscal stimulus, 20% quantitative, 6% supply chain, I know it went over 100. We don't know, but it was, it was all those sort of things. What we do know is that the wealth effect is about to go in reverse. And we also know that you can't do what, what this person is suggesting without all of these unforeseen cons, uh, unforeseen consequences that uh, are in some ways worse than a recession, at least on the downside. So like Wait, SPAC, we don't, we don't SPAC know. Mageddon would be would be a, a really good example of that. Josh, this we don't know. Of, we don't know that the wealth effect is going to go into reverse. We don't know that for sure. Would you be... I would Another two weeks would, like this, and I do know that for I, sure. Okay. No, you don't. I wouldn't be shocked to see consumer spending not fall off a cliff. Well, consumer confidence has already fallen off a cliff. And but small business isn't. and spending, small business owner isn't. optimism is off a cliff. And but the NHB said that building uh, builder sentiment is off a cliff. So watch what uh, they do. Stay tuned. I would I would just I would just say we had a massive wealth transfer, and a lot of the money that was it, w with the right intentions sent out as stimulus or to forestall or, or people getting fired or recession. Blah blah blah. I mean, honestly, it ended up in ETFs and stocks and IPOs and investment bankers and people that spend their summers in the Hamptons and people who create bullshit investment products to sell to others. There was a huge wealth transfer and another generation got to learn about investing the hard way. And that's, this, that's what we're living through right now. True, 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 all true, all true. I think that the stock market damage will be worse than the economic damage. Well, that's, you know what? I hope that's true and that's very, very possible. That there's no reason why a stock, a bear market has to spill over into the real economy. And a great example of it not doing that is 1987. It was unnecessary. Uh, we had a stock market crash without the attendant uh, recession, and that certainly could be the case this time. So a stock given, market meltdown, given what's going on. an economic slowdown does not mean end of the world. Does not mean you're losing your job. Knock on wood. Here, here. Okay, what's your, uh, what's your, second, what's your second viewer topic? Okay, so up next we have... Uh, a question about the new revenue growth. For many years, investors were primarily concerned with revenue growth, but that seems to have changed. What's behind this change in sentiment, and what stat oh. do investors care most about now? Quality. Guidance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ba ba balance sheet, quality, management quality. That's it. That's the, that's the new. If you were launching a, a thematic ETF or a factory ETF right now, that's the only one any investor would buy from you. Well, but Josh, is also quality. I'm sorry, that's, not quality. I used to quality. I used to quality. I'm saying guidance because we showed charts, I think it was from Bianca or somebody, the ratio of positive to negative earnings guidance flipped bigly in the first quarter. And that's when we started to see real massacre. It's not just revenue growth because uh, Azure grew 49% year over year. Their revenue's up 90%. Google up, whatever I said, 23%. It's the guidance. It's because what they just did is already priced into the stock. It's the guidance. Uh... Guidance for so so profit guidance though earnings guidance that's Bianco's yeah if they revi if they guide lower versus what they previously guide to which Texas Instruments did in the after hours right. they're getting shit canned right no I I 100 percent agree but I, I I also think that there is a bias toward higher quality companies a year ago at this time it was the opposite it was what is the stupidest idea you've ever heard. What is the company that just came public 15 minutes ago with the yeah. youngest founder and the wackiest yep. story? And the, this is the polar opposite. This is like Berkshire Hathaway market, Pfizer, yeah. Walmart. Look at the stocks on the Costco. Uh, look at the stocks that are within 10% of a 52 week high. Do that screen for yourself on Y charts and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. It cuts across every sector 
every cap size is, is consistent. It's quality. People yeah. want strong balance sheets, uh, long tenured management, and no bullshit. All right. Let's, um, go, out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's go out on a high note. High okay. note. NASDAQ 100 down 20 bips in the after hours. All right. That's it. Turn, turn That's around Wednesday. Worse. Turn around there Wednesday. You, you heard it here first. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you, John. Thank you, Nicole. Guys, check out idonshop.com for our all new line of compound merchandise. Everything in the store is dope. You're going to love it. We, we did a huge upgrade. Hats, t-shirts, sweatshirts. We did a beach towel uh, th- for, for the summer. Forget it. Uh, brand new Animal Spirits tomorrow morning when you wake up. Best financial podcast in the world. Mike and Ben. Thursday, another all-new Portfolio Rescue starring Ben Carlson. Get your questions in. Get your questions in. Ask the compound. At, is it Ask the Compound at Gmail? Or ask, ask the, the compound, compound show. show. Yes, ask there the compound is. show there it is. at Gmail. Ask also, the Portfolio compound Rescue. Show at Gmail. It's tomorrow this week. It's the voice of God. It's, it's the tomorrow voice of God. Tomorrow. Oh, we're doing it tomorrow. Uh, ben that's, a lot of, that's a lot of Ben in one day. I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> all right. And at the end of the week. TCAF. Another, another all new The Compound of Friends. Have a great night, everybody. Like and subscribe. <laughs>